In Ghazal 1376, Rumi says, Each time I reach for a task, he binds my hands in chains. When I seek sobriety, he drowns me in love's wine. What does Rumi mean in this verse? Why does Rumi's beloved bind his hands? How does surrender to divine love liberate the soul? What is Rumi teaching us about the relationship between human effort and the divine will? Let's explore how Rumi's journey reveals a deeper truth about surrender to divine love. Zanjeer bar dastam nahad, gar dast bar kari baram, dar khun be mey qargam konad, gar qast khushyari konam. Rumi starts this ghazal by saying, This world does not require much engagement. How long must I labor with clay? To labor with clay for Rumi means to be caught in the transient, fleeting aspect of life. The clay symbolizes the material, the mundane, the temporal distractions that weigh us down. <laughs> But here, Rumi is not just lamenting the world. He is pointing us to a much deeper truth, the realization that all these distractions are an illusion. He knows that his purpose lies elsewhere, in the love of the divine. Yet he acknowledges that when he reaches out for a task, his hands are bound by chains. Who binds him? The very beloved he seeks to serve. Rumi is teaching us that the divine love is not something passive. It actively pulls us away from the distractions of life. So when Rumi says, each time I reach out for a task, my hands are bound by chains, he's describing the way the divine beloved intervenes, preventing him from immersing himself in what is ultimately unimportant. And yet, the more Rumi tries to remain sober, to act with restraint, the more he is drowned in the wine of divine love. This wine is not the wine of forgetfulness, but of spiritual intoxication. Let's pause for a moment and reflect on these two symbols, chains and wine. Chains suggest restrictions, but in Rumi's mystical vision, they represent freedom from the mundane. They bind him only to release him from lower desires, and the wine? The wine of divine love overwhelms him, not to dull his awareness, but to expand it. Rumi then changes the imagery. He contrasts the worldly self with the spiritual one. I'm not the dark earth to be blown away by the wind, nor the blue sky to cover myself in a rusty clothes. Here, Rumi asserts his higher identity, his true self, something that transcends time and decay. The earth and sky represent the ephemeral nature of the human existence. But Rumi, awakened by divine love, is no longer bound by these limitations. Rumi moves deeper into the poem's central idea. I am the sultan of my soul. Why should I act like a slave? To become the sultan of the soul means to rise beyond the worldly concerns, to not be a slave to fear, desires, and fleeting pleasures of the world. In the intoxication of divine love, Rumi finds lordly and majestic freedom. <laughs> Rumi uses the metaphor of a stallholder, someone who engages with worldly trade. He rejects the need for worldly attachments, saying, Why should I open a stall when he's both my market and my stall? Rumi has found something far more valuable. A mine of rubies, which represents divine truth and wisdom. When one has discovered the infinite richness of divine love, what need is there for uh, worldly transactions? This realization leads Rumi to tear down his stall. To completely abandon the pretense of participating in worldly distractions. His engagement is now solely with the Divine Beloved. And it is through this exclusive devotion that he 
attains the sovereignty over his soul. دکان خود ویران کنم دکان من سودای او چون کان لعلی یافتم من چون دکانداری کنم This is important. Rumi here is not speaking as an individual mystic. He is speaking as a representative of the human condition. His journey is not his own. It is the path for every soul that seeks liberation through divine love. And then comes a moment of transcendence. چون بلبلم در باغ دل ننگ است اگر جغدی کنم چون گلبنم در گلشنش حیف است اگر خاوری کنم I am the night girl in the heart's garden it would be a shame to act like an owl I am the rose in his garden it would be wasteful to act like a thorn Rumi tells us that once awakened to the beauties of divine love flying freely and enjoying spiritual joys to return to worldly concerns is a great loss Finally, he returns to the idea of spiritual intoxication. Each time Rumi tries to gain sobriety, to go back to worldly concerns, worldly mundane matters, he is drowned in the wine of divine love. This cycle of reaching out and being pulled back is a reminder of the overwhelming power of divine love. It is not something to be controlled, only surrendered to. Throughout this ghazal, um, Rumi's teaching is clear. Divine love is not something we can reach on our own terms. It binds us, intoxicates us, and finally liberates us from the chains of the world. In surrendering to divine love, we find freedom. Freedom from our own desires, from demands of the world, and even from the limited understanding of ourselves. At the heart of Rumi's message is this. We are not bound by the fleeting distractions of life. We are destined to something greater, union with the divine. And it is through this union that we become the sultan of our souls. If you wish to learn about Rumi's view on how divine love intoxicates and illuminates the soul, I invite you to watch this video. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Until next time, may you continue to walk the path of divine love and discover the sultan within.